Hi guys, Sister Bach here. Since we can't have our Eight is Great program in person, we wanted to make sure that you guys could still see what the font looked like before your baptism day. The baptismal font is at the back of the building. It's in the young women's room and it's behind these accordion doors here. You've probably seen the accordion doors, but maybe haven't seen the baptismal font. The baptismal font is right here. It's like a giant bathtub and that mirror is so that everybody can see and make sure that you get all the way under the water. So here's what it looks like. Um, when they fill it, the water will come out of that. And then there's the drain right there at the bottom, just like a giant bathtub. Now don't worry, I promise the water will be warm. So it's not like a swimming pool, it's more like a bath. So when you come for your baptism day, you'll be able to go into the bathroom from a different door. And it's right here on the side of the baptismal font. It'll be unlocked for you guys. So you can go in and be able to get into the font. Here's what it looks like. You'll be able to walk through the door here. Okay. And here are the stairs down to the font. All right. And this is the door to the bathroom. So that way you guys can get dressed and get dried off and do everything that you need to. Here's what it looks like to be inside the font. So you'll just be standing here with a priesthood holder and you'll be able to see some of your family um, right up here. So right now I'm standing in the font. Hi. A couple of things that I wanna remind you guys of for your baptism day. Number one, sometimes toes come up. If your toe comes out of the water, you have to get baptized again. That happened to me when I was eight years old. So make sure you stick your toes under your dad's feet so that they don't come up. Second thing that's really, really important to remember, please make sure that you unplug the drain. <laughs> unplug the drain when you're done, otherwise you're gonna have to get back in. When you actually get baptized in the font, your dad or another priesthood holder will hold you and put you all the way under the water. So make sure you plug your nose too. That way water doesn't get up in your nose. And all of your family will be able to watch. Um, sometimes it'll be via technology and sometimes, or some of the people will be able to be in person. I hope that this little video helps you guys feel a little bit more comfortable on your baptism day, knowing where you'll be baptized and a little bit more of how it works. Hello, boys and girls. I'm Sister Todd, and I'm the primary teacher of the CTR 6 and the CTR 7 class. If you are in the CTR 7 class, you will turn 8 this year during while you're in primary. When you turn eight, you reach the age where you're held accountable because you can understand the importance of baptism, but you can also understand the importance of keeping the commandments. I want to start out by reading a scripture from Mosiah 18:10. Now I say unto you, if this be the desires of your hearts, what have you against being baptized? in the name of the Lord, as a witness before him that ye have entered into a covenant with him, that ye will serve him and keep his commandments, that he may pour out his spirit more abundantly upon you. What a very special blessing. If we will keep his commandments, he will bless us and our blessings will be strong. You remember that Christ was baptized by John the Baptist, Baptist by John the Baptist in the River Jordan to show us the way that we need to go to do the things as an example for us. Joseph Smith and Oliver Cowdery were also baptized. John the Baptist returned and taught them about baptism and gave them the authority to baptize. We also, or you will be baptized you will be able to go down into the font with someone who has the authority to baptize you and make you a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. You will be clean and pure at this time. Church leaders have taught 
that when you partake of the sacrament, you are renewing the covenants you have made with the Lord. Baptism is the very first covenant that you make. To make and it makes it so you'll possibly become a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. We need to be reverent during the sacrament. It is a very special time. In the sacrament prayers, it says, O God, the Eternal Father, we ask thee in thy name of thy Son, Jesus Christ, to bless and sanctify the bread to the souls of all those who partake of it. But it's very special, the blessing that we have, that they are willing to take upon them the name of the Son and always remember him and keep his commandments, which has been given to them, that they may always have his spirit to be with them. If we always keep his commandments, his spirit will always be with us. And on the sacrament prayer of the water, we have the same blessings, very similar, that they may witness unto thee, O God, the eternal Father, that they do always remember him. As we take the sacrament, we ask and are told that we need to remember him. And if we do, his spirit will always be with us. So when the sacrament is passed, we need to be reverent. We need to be thinking of Christ and the things that he did for us and the stories we know that have been taught and that we read. In baptism, our part is to be baptized and keep his commandments. On the Lord's part, he will pour out his spirit before us that we may, that the spirit may be more abundantly. We have the same type of promises with the sacrament. Our part is that we take his name upon us, that we will keep his commandments. His part is that we may always have his spirit. You receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. There is a plaque that's called My Baptismal Covenants, and these are my part. That baptism I covenant with the Lord, that I will come unto the Lord and be a member of his church. I'm going to be called a son or a daughter of the Heavenly Father. He's, we're supposed to bless others and help others with their burdens. That is part of our covenant. We need to always be a witness of God. You should never be ashamed to be a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. We should always serve our Heavenly Father and keep His commandments. And if we do these, then the Lord's part says, He will forgive our sins. We always have the opportunity to repent and do the things and change our lives and do what He wants us to do. He'll pour His Spirit out upon us so that He's always there to help. He's always there to answer our prayers. He's always there to teach us. And he will redeem us, that we can enter with him and return to heaven and be his sons and his daughters. One of my very favorite sacrament hymns is called Reverently and Meekly Now. It's on page 185 in our songbook. The Lord is talking and telling us his story. But I especially like the fourth verse where he says, I have loved thee as thy friend with a love that cannot end. Be obedient, I implore. Prayerful and watch evermore. I have a testimony, testimony of the importance of baptism. I have a testimony of the importance of sacraments. I am grateful for the gospel. I am grateful for the knowledge the Lord has given to me and the opportunity to always learn more. And I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hello, I am Sister Bergman. For those of you who don't know me, I am one of the primary teachers in the Midlothian Ward. And I am so grateful to have this opportunity to speak to you for Eight is Great. It is an exciting year, you guys. You are turning eight this year, and that means you are going to be baptized as a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. And after you are baptized, guess what? You get to get a very 
exciting gift. It's not this gift. It's another gift. An even more exciting gift. I'm going to give you a hint of what the gift is, and that hint is in the fourth article of faith. It goes, we believe that the first principles and ordinance of the gospel are first, faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, second, repentance, third, baptism by immersion for the remission of sins, and fourth, the laying on of hands for the gift of the Holy Ghost. So what's the gift? The gift is the Holy Ghost. So why is it number four? Why do we have to wait until after we get baptized to get the Holy Ghost? I'll tell you why. Because the Holy Ghost dwells in holy places. So first we have to get baptized and we have to get all our sins washed away and then we become a holy place. And then the Holy Ghost can come and live with us. Now sometimes we may make a mistake and we may have sins and then uh, we may actually go to places that may not be so holy and then what happens? Whoop! The Holy Ghost doesn't want to be with us anymore. And that's a bummer, right? But can we get the Holy Ghost back? Yes. How do we do that if we're not feeling holy anymore? Repentance. If we repent, we can be holy and clean again. And then whoop, we can have the Holy Ghost back with us again. And that is the power of the atonement of Jesus Christ. Now, there are some very cool things that the Holy Ghost can do. And I'm going to talk about three different things that the Holy Ghost can do for us. First, the Holy Ghost can be like a compass. Have you seen one of these? It's a cell phone, but right now it's a compass. What does a compass do? A compass can tell us which way to go if we're lost. And just like a compass, the Holy Ghost, if we're lost, if we don't know which way to go, if we're not sure what to do, we can pray and the Holy Ghost will guide us. He'll teach us in our heart which way to go and what decision to make. There is a song, a primary song that I learned when I was a little girl that goes like this. Listen to the still small voice. Listen, listen. If you have to make a choice, he will guide you always. I don't know if you've seen that song in primary anymore, but I always remember that. If you have to make a choice, he will guide you. I know he will. Now, the second thing that the Holy Ghost can do is we call him also the comforter. If you're scared or feeling lonely or sad, you can pray and the Holy Ghost will come and he will comfort you. He will help you not to be so afraid and not to be scared. He will wrap around you just like the arms of your mommy or your dad and help you feel better, like just like a teddy bear or blanket. So the Holy Ghost is the comforter. The third thing that I love that the Holy Ghost can do is to keep us safe, just like a traffic signal. So maybe we're thinking about making a choice that's not such a good idea. The Holy Ghost can whisper to us, mm, warning, warning, caution, bad idea. Or maybe we're gonna get into some major danger and not a good idea, like bad, bad, immediately. He can send us a, whoa, stop, don't do that. Just like a red light. Or guess what? He can also give us a green light and promptings of good ideas. Like maybe he can give us a prompting to help somebody out or to do something today that we hadn't thought of, or he can give us promptings to read the scriptures or to go to the temple and to do good things too. So the Holy Ghost, he sends us messages to keep us safe, to keep us on the right road. Now I know you guys, as you grow and learn, and as you have the Holy Ghost as your companion, you will learn to listen and to hear how the Holy Ghost talks to you. I know you will. And I'm so excited for you to get baptized and to receive the gift of Holy Ghost to be with you this year and to start your path on the gospel of, of Jesus Christ and to go through this doorway and to receive the Holy Ghost to be with you. I'm so grateful for the gospel and for the Savior and for this church. And I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hello, my young brothers and sisters. This is Brother Roger Meeks. I hope you're doing good. I hope you're happy. I'm so 
blessed to be able to be here today talking to you and giving you my thoughts on confirmation. Uh, the primary presidency let me know that this was for the eight and great, eight is great, excuse me, program. And I'm so happy to be able to give my thoughts and bear my testimony to you. So I've been asked to talk about confirmation. What is confirmation? You know, we all know what a baptism is. You go and you're baptized by immersion. So you go all the way under the water and then uh, you're confirmed a member of the church and you receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. What an awesome opportunity for you all to both be baptized and then confirmed a member of the church and receive that wonderful gift. I know we, we all like receiving gifts, whether it's Christmas time or our birthdays or whenever it is. It's always nice to receive things. Well, the gift of the Holy Ghost, I think, is the best gift that you could ever get. Um, I, I know that I can pray to my Heavenly Father and that through the gift of the Holy Ghost and through that power that I can know what is right and what is wrong. And if I ever have questions about that, I can kneel down and pray and I can explain what I'm feeling and I know that my Heavenly Father blesses me to know what is right. And that's through the gift of the Holy Ghost. And it's such a special thing. Well, what else happens when we're confirmed a member of the church? Well, congratulations, you've made it. You've opened the door or you've opened the gate for the long and straight and narrow path that leads to happiness and living forever with our Heavenly Father and with the rest of your family. Wow. Uh, what an awesome way to go. I know in the church, a lot of times we talk about hold to the rod, the iron rod. And uh, if you ever seen that song, I hope you always think back to your baptism, that you will know that you were baptized and you grabbed hold of the end of that rod. And if you continue down that path, choosing right, that you will have all the blessings and all the goodness that comes from that. That is a, a special treat in my mind. So with the Holy Ghost, I like to think of the Holy Ghost as my spiritual muscles. And the more I listen and the better I listen, the stronger my muscles get. Now, I know some of you boys probably are thinking, well, I got big muscles already. Well, those are your physical muscles. Well, and you girls might be thinking the same thing. I know how strong and tough you guys are too. So here's the thing. To strengthen our spiritual muscles, we have to learn how to listen to the Holy Ghost. And this keeps us on that straight and narrow path. From being a member of the church so what you want to do i want you when you have a chance get in the quietness of your room kneel down and you tell heavenly father how you feel you thank him for the things that you're thankful for and you ask him for the things that you need help with and if you have a specific question you ask your heavenly father what that is and then listen see what you feel do you hear a voice does your chest feel warm? Do you just feel happy? Do you suddenly have an answer in your mind? There's so many different ways that you can hear the Holy Ghost. And how you hear him is up to you. But once you figure out what that is, then you can start to build your spiritual muscles and you can become a powerhouse in the gospel. So I know you're you know, excited for your baptism and I know you're excited to be confirmed a member of the church and receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. But remember the promise, and I know that it's true, that if you will ask your Heavenly Father for anything that you need, He will respond to you. And that is through the gift of the Holy Ghost. And through that gift, you can know the truth of everything. I'm so excited for your baptisms this year. You're making great choices. Keep up the good work. Know that the church is true. And if you get a chance, give your parents a hug and a kiss. They deserve that. All right. Thanks, brothers and sisters. I leave this with you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I got baptized in September. And when you get baptized, it, you, you make a promise to God. And when I got baptized, I felt happy. And there wasn't a lot of people because of COVID-19. So there was only my grandmommy, papa, and my family. And we were what we weared white. I felt happy when I got baptized. Hi, I'm Cora Johnson and I was baptized last July and I'm eight years old. My baptism was special because I gotta do it in Utah with all my cousins. And my grandma was there to give me my Book of Mormon in gold print with my name on it. 
And my other grandma was on FaceTime and she got to see the whole thing. My aunt and my mom spoke on the talks and they were really neat. And another really special thing was that my cousin Cohen, he got to ba get baptized too. He was baptized like I was on that same day. He went and I went. But the most important thing is I got the Holy Ghost. Hi guys. Thanks for watching our Age is Great program. We hope that it gives you some more information so that you feel ready for that special day when you choose to get baptized. We love you.